And we're back in the SolidWorks live booth here in the 3D Experience Playground at 3D Experience World 2020. We actually had uh, one of our customers stop by, one of the attendees here at 3D Experience World, Eric Spurgeon with Tarhoon 3D and Iron Hedge. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Eric. Pleasure. So glad to have you here. You actually have a lot of things that we want to talk about. I love <laughs> it when we get attendees on here and you start hearing about all the things that they're involved with. And Eric's involved in a lot. So I want to start right up from the top. You, you're, you work with Tar Tarhoon 3D, but you said there's actually an explanation to that name. <laughs> Tell us what that means. Yeah, so Tarhoon 3D is an engineering product design firm. And Tarhoon is an old word that means to conquer, which I think is a good mindset to have around problem solving and uh, working through engineering challenges. So I just got excited about the name, and, and that was what I went with. So I'm guessing being here at 3D Experience World, you're trying to conquer those uh, design challenges with tools like SolidWorks, obviously? Oh, absolutely. Just looking at what the cutting edge is and what's coming down the line next. But that's not all you do. You're also part of a startup called Iron Hedge as well, right? Yep. So tell us a little bit about what Iron Hedge is. Absolutely. So Iron Hedge is a company that is trying to disrupt the way barbed wire fence is installed. Um, barbed wire fence is used in agriculture for pasture fences and livestock management. Um, it's a 150 plus year old industry that uh, is ripe for some disruption. So changing the way that that whole process works. So can you give us any insight as to what you guys are doing that's going to make that that's going to make this uh, disruptive? So we are in stealth mode, so I have to keep it okay. a little bit brief, but um, we're redesigning some of the long held beliefs um, in the way components are designed now that fail uh, and using cutting edge structural analysis to um, change that as well as the whole installation process to potentially triple a contractor's daily revenue because Very. of because of increased productivity. Very cool. So in this industry, can you tell us where you're located? Yeah. Uh, so very middle of the United States, uh, <laughs> outside of a town called Wichita, Kansas. Um, so a lot of bar barbed wire needed out there, actually, right? Yes. Yep. So, so you're in Wichita, Kansas. You're not only out there working with a startup, working with Tarhoon. You are also one of the user group leaders out there, right? Mm -hmm. See, I told everyone on camera this wasn't just one story. There's lots of stories there. Tell us about the user group you're working with. Absolutely. So I run the South Central Kansas SolidWorks user group. That's a long name. It is. Uh, we're working on that. We're going to hold a competition this year. Uh, new logo, new name, and get a little more inspiration that people are excited about. So we're all about competitions here. Uh -huh. We have lots of them going on at 3D Experience World. We're holding a competition that we'll get to in a minute that I think you're taking part in that. <laughs> but you know, we're using the 3D Experience platform to host a lot of different competitions here. Are you guys looking at using any of those tools in your renaming and relogo process? Absolutely. So this is all part of the, the meetup or all part of the rollover to the meetup platform and um, the 3D Experience platform as well within the Swagin community. Um, yeah, we're just we're excited to use the new tool and uh, make it easier for everybody to connect and participate. Okay, well, what's so what's driving the name change of the user group by you? I'll just say it again out loud. South Central Kansas <laughs> SolidWorks user group. <laughs> it's a bit of a tongue twister, it right? It is. It <laughs> doesn't acronym very well either, right? No. S-C-K-S-U-G-A-I, -S I don't know. So. <laughs> well, that's cool. How many members do you guys typically have at your user group? We typically have 40 to 50 members come. Wow. On a, on a regular meeting, how regularly are you hosting your meetings? We host four meetings a year. Wow. So you guys have a big group that likes to get together. What are some of your favorite topics to talk about at, you know, at, the, at the South Central Kansas SolidWorks user group? So we like to talk about whatever the users are excited about. We run all of our meetings through a survey program right after, and we always request new meeting topics. So... Um, Specific challenges for the specific industries in Wichita is what we try to tailor to. Um, so everybody comes and gets something unique and valuable to them out of the event. Well, so it's a, it's a real collaborative process when you guys are thinking about what the next speakers are going to talk about and who those speakers might be, even, Absolutely. I suppose. So, so a, a moment ago, I talked briefly about using tools like the 3D Experience platform to host a contest. We're hosting one here at 3D Experience World called the Hackathon. And you're actually participating in that, right? 
Yes, Team 2. Vote Team 2. Vote Team 2. <laughs> tell us a little bit about Team 2 and what you're doing at the Hack. Tell us about your experience, first of all, at participating in the Hackathon. What's this been like for you? Man, um, it's different than anything I've ever worked on, and it's absolutely amazing. Uh, I had an amazing team. Uh, we all worked together. We're all from different parts of the United States. Had never met until we got together today. So you've never met any of these people before until in person until today. Correct. Actually, I should say or, yesterday, sorry, yesterday. But yes, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, no, and and the experience itself is just so exciting to see. Every team had a different approach. Everybody had different ideas, and we all took a different kind of path to a solution, um, which is just really cool to see different ways that mind works. So how did this work? Somebody reached out to you and said, "Eric, do you want to design a new prosthetic <laughs> limb?" Is, I mean, how did, how did you get involved in this? Yeah, um, Sean O'Neill with SolidWorks was kind enough to invite me to participate. Um, okay. Felt like I had no business doing prosthetic design. <laughs> I do a lot of weldments and sheet metal, but um, it was really, really cool. You know, the really cool thing about looking at something like a hackathon is you can bring people from very a variety of industries and bring them together and get new ideas and concepts together. And I think that was the idea. You could use tools like the 3D Experience platform to bring all your different domain expertise into one place. Mm -hmm. So was there anything, what was one of your favorite parts about working? Well, Explain your your prosthetic hand that you guys you worked on on the hackathon first. Sure, and I'll try not to wave my hand around too much. But basically, we took the existing model, which is a really really simple and robust design, and just tried to make it more human lifelike. We focused on um, a very rugged design that made uh, someone feel like a whole person. That was a, something we uncovered early in our research. So uh, basically, it's a cuff at the bicep to create stability. It's a simple ratcheting mechanism inspired by the BOA system to latch onto the forearm. And then from here down, the hand, um, there's a rotation at the thumb joint. There's a rotation here, there's rotation here and here, and then these two joints are fixed. And so you get a grasping motion, but you also get an easy hook motion. And then we cover the whole thing in a silicon mold, so it remains clean. And we also embed conductive materials into the silicon mold, so use of a cell phone and those types of functionalities are possible. Very cool. So tell me like what one of the one of your favorite parts of working on this project was. So you said you came from a background of doing a lot of sheet metal and weldment work. You you were initially a bit concerned. I don't know what I have doing uh, <laughs> designing this product. Tell me like where you got involved in this product or what one of the most rewarding parts of the design aspect of this was. I have to say the most rewarding piece was the collaboration tool. Um, I work with all of my clients remotely, so I spend a lot of time in the home office and trying to manage multiple streams of conversation on multiple different platforms is a challenge. And being able to have everything in one place, um, we only had four weeks to do a design project that was fairly complicated. and we covered a tremendous amount of ground. And most of that was just because we all had a live, real-time stream of everybody's ideas. People could comment, chime in, um, and then we didn't have to wait till that once or twice a week meeting to finally talk about something and hash through the details. Yeah, you, you were instantly getting that feedback. So, I mean, that experience, it was pretty good. You enjoyed it as a collaborative tool for, for working with this team? Yeah, I, I am most excited about that as a tool. It was just really, really could change the game for my business personally. So did you, uh, did you work with any of the X apps, like X Design or X Shape or anything yes, like that? Yes, yeah. So we, we ran our entire project through the 3D Experience platform. Um, we had a member of our team, Isabel. She was really, really good with surface modeling. And so she um, did most of our X Shape work. And then uh, the rest of us were um, kind of mechanical designers. And so we all worked in, in X Design. Um, so what did you think about using Was this your first time ever using X Design? Yes. What did you think about it? Lots of thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really enjoyed the user interface, and I really enjoyed the way that everything was laid out. I thought it was intuitive coming from a heavy SOLIDWORKS um, and other CAD system background. The learning curve was shorter, and I appreciated that. Um, we had some stability issues, and I know everybody did. It seemed somewhat related to geography, um, but that's just part of a new process. I don't dock the software for that. Sure. So let everybody at home know again who, what team you were with. <laughs> so you want to get them to vote there, right? Absolutely. Team two, we're MP 2.0. That means Manibus Postea, replacement hand in Latin.
Ah, very cool. So anybody interested in participating in the vote at home, you can go to SolidWorks.com slash vote to get involved in the entire voting process. If you tune into SolidWorks Live, we actually have a video on our stream. You can find it on YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. I said Facebook already. I missed one. Uh, <laughs> LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We have the videos there. We actually have a highlights reel showing all of the teams uh, so you can get a look at all of them. You can see what Team 2 did there. And I encourage you to go there, uh, sign up, get a 3D experience ID, and log in to vote. So, Eric, I want to thank you so much for being here. Just like Lynn was here a moment ago, I want to give you a pair of these awesome SolidWorks socks. And <laughs> here, have another pair to go give to uh, some. Give it to your next presenter at your user group meeting. Not a problem. It's all about the swag for user group meetings. Yeah, you guys have a you guys have a big meeting tomorrow, right? A big Swagin meeting tomorrow. Yeah, the Swagin Summit is tomorrow morning. Very cool. Are you excited for that? Oh, yeah. All right. Sounds good. All right, Eric, thanks so much for joining us here live in the studio. Just like I had an opportunity yesterday to talk with Lenovo, Mark Peterson had a really great opportunity to go speak with Dell yesterday afternoon. So let's go ahead and take a look at that.